Hello, everybody. All right, I gave the kiddos today um, this fifth grade science star review, and um, I just wanted to kind of break it up in pieces and talk about it a little bit um, to help the kids review. And so um, I told them, you know, take this home, read a little bit through it each day up until next week, and um, look over, you know, most importantly, the vocabulary. Um, a lot of the science questions, like if you know the vocabulary or what connects with what, um, you could be successful um, just, you know, having that down. And then um, I told them, you know, grab a sister, brother, mom, dad, grandma, whoever's available to help you. Um, and, you know, on some of the words, you know, tell me everything that you know about weathering. Tell me everything that you know about adaptations and just getting them to talk and go through um, some of these topics. Uh, would be great. So on the first page, um, this is kind of just beginner science stuff. It goes through um, just talking about different tools and things like that, safety that we usually start off at the beginning of the year. The big thing on here is um, right here, only one variable in an investigation can be changed. So when you're doing an experiment, everything in the experiment should be kept the same. So for example, if I am testing what kind of soil works best to grow tomato seeds, then I want everything to be the same except for the one thing that I'm testing. So I want the container to be the same, the amount of water. I want um, the type of, um, or the position they are, you know, for sunlight, everything to be the same. And then the, since I'm testing what kind of soil would work best, that's the only thing that I'm gonna have different. I would have different types of um, soil. So making sure that there's only one variable that's changed um, makes um, makes you have reliable uh, data. All right, on the other side here, um, sedimentary rock. And so um, the big thing right here, let me highlight these, and they can do the same at home. So right here, where we're talking about only one variable being changed, everything else must remain the same. And then on the other side here, so then it just gets into safety, which must, that's just common sense here. Um, over here, fossil fuels and fossils, where, okay, sediment. So right here, it's formed um, by sediment that has been packed into layers over many years. So you'll see, um, you'll see different layers and the kids will have questions about, um, you know, which is the oldest layer, which is the newer. Um, and so everything that would be on the top would be your newer layers and oh, on the bottom would be um, older layers. And then here, let's see, fossil fuels. These are created from remains of ancient organisms that were buried by sediment. They're changed by heat and pressure over millions of years. And your fossil fuels are coal, oil, and natural gas. And I always tell the kids to remember um, fossil fuels, um, con for coal, oil, and natural gas. And con rhymes with non. These are non-renewable um, non -renewable resources meaning they cannot be replaced in our lifetime. They take millions of years. And um, it is, again, created from those ancient um, organisms that were buried and compacted and heat and pressure um, create those. All right, so that's first page. Next page here um, has some different vocabulary that is um, broken up into the different sections. So again, um, pick a word and um, just, you know, what can you tell me about this? And so I'm gonna go through and highlight the ones that, um, that we've talked about. So landforms, natural resources, renewable, non-renewable, conservation, climate, weather, weathering, erosion, deposition, sediment, sedimentary rock, soils, fossils, rocks, minerals, um, seasons, solar system, planets, star, sun, uh, sunspots, moon, moon phases, orbit, axis, revolution, rotation, decomposers, omnivores, carnivores, herbivores, consumers, producers, photosynthesis, food web and food chain, 
um, life cycles of plants and animals, uh, accumulation, precipitation, evaporation, condensation, water cycle, um, different cycles, uh, habitats, ecosystems, environment, adaptations. Um, there's that so far, in case my hand was blocking it. Uh, let's see, learned and inherited traits, population, organisms, reproduce, survive. And then for physical science, uh, matter, solid, liquid, gas, physical property, color, shape, smell, taste, heat, magnetism, um, conduct electricity, mass. Uh, there's how you measure it, weight. There's how you measure it. So those. And then um, mixture, solution, evaporation, energy, solar, electrical, electricity, circuits, insulators, conductors, light, reflection, refraction, sound, motion, vibration, magnet, um, force, motion, friction, gravity, and heat. So these are words, the ones that I highlighted. Um, those are things that they need to know. So again, pick one and, you know, circuit. Tell me everything. What's important about circuits? What do you need to know about circuits? Um, if you have a question about circuits, you know, what are you thinking of? What are, what's your strategy that you're supposed to use? Um, you know, what, what does that look like in fifth grade? Uh, then over here, scientific tools. So talking about how different tools have different jobs. Um, so it goes in, tells you how to find length, mass, time, volume, and um, gives you some images there. Of the different tools. On the next page it continues with the tools and then it has some more um, essential vocabulary. So these are things that aren't necessarily um, you know something that we taught but it's you know within a question they're going to need to know this vocabulary. So what does it mean to analyze? What does it mean to classify or collect or conclude or evaluate? Uh, so those are things that might pop up. Then on the next page, we've got Earth Science with the planets. Let me get this straight here. All right, so it goes in talking, talking about the planets. There's that down there. And then... Let's see, the big thing over here, um, gravity, um, we're orbiting around the sun, uh, the moon orbits around the earth, the planets are orbiting around the sun, um, so those things. And then also knowing, and this might pop up somewhere else, um, but knowing you know, what causes day and night? What causes seasons? Um, how many, you know, when we do a trip around the sun, how long is that? Um, talking about those things um, as well. Uh, here we're talking about measurement. And so, um, let's see, nothing. This here, they need to know that mass is measured in grams. Volume is measured in liters. And so here it's giving them... Um, some examples of those things and the tools that you'd use to measure. On the back, all right, life cycle with plants. All right, so living things are called organisms. This includes both plants and animals. So um, in our life, our life science unit, um, we talked about uh, plants and animals. And so let me see some big things here to make sure. Uh, photosynthesis. We learned that plants make their own food. Those are our producers. And this is how, how they make it. This we did, we spent a lot of time on adaptations. And um, when you see that, just knowing adaptations has to do with how can either the plant or the animal, like what do they have on their body? What's structural or what's a behavioral adaptation that's helping them to survive in their um, environment? 
So then it goes through and it gives some examples of each of those. And then down here, we talked about um, how seeds can be dispersed. And so um, wind, water, or um, animal movement. And again, that's helping the plant's um, chance of survival. And then it goes into some more examples about that. And then talking about how traits, um, all plant traits and behaviors are inherited. So unlike animal, like an animal, um, you know, a dog, it can learn how to, um, it can learn how to sit. That wasn't something that it inherited. It was um, a learned behavior. And this page over here, Earth Science, Earth and Sun. So Earth rotates on its axis. This can give us, oh, here's what I was talking about. This gives us our one day, um, night and day. So when we're facing day, when we're not, night. Uh, Earth resolves around the sun. That takes 365 days. We have different seasons. So um, this all has to do with the tilt. And so this part right here, um, this guide right here is important when we are um, facing towards. So here when Earth is facing towards the sun, um, we could say that the northern hemisphere is receiving summer. But here, the northern hemisphere is facing away from the sun, so um, we're having winter. And then um, here showing the tilt. And so if the earth wasn't tilted, we would just have one season. But because there's that tilt, um, we have our four different seasons. And then this is important right here. Um, we, the sun rises in the east and it sets in the west. And then here, they need to know that shadows are the shortest at midday, and they're the longest in the early morning or late afternoon. So if you are standing here, and it's noon, the sun is directly above your head. So the only thing blocking is your head so there's going to be a short little shadow just around your feet but if the sun is appearing to be lower in the sky then the sun is shining and your more of your body is blocking so then your shadow uh, would be on the um, the opposite side and so depending on where the sun is um, that determines the length and direction of your shadow so they need to know um, as the sun is appearing to move across the sky, oh, what does that do to the shadows? All right, next up, let's see, oh, we did that page. Oh, my page is confused here. All right, earth science, characteristics of the earth and the moon. All right, um, let's see, we didn't talk about some of those. Um, okay, knowing, um, we did a lot of comparing the sun, earth, and moon, and talking about characteristics um, that they have, that they share, that they're the same, and then talking about how they're different. So um, anything in here, um, like the moon has no liquid water, no living things, um, it has, this says no, but it's a very, very little atmosphere. Um, because there's no atmosphere, they, it doesn't have any weathering or erosion. And then um, Earth is a planet that is made up of rock with areas of water. It's smaller than the sun and can support life. And uh, we do have an atmosphere, and so um, we do have weather. And so since we do have an um, atmos atmosphere, our um, Earth's surface is constantly changing, and uh, we have weathering erosion. And then moon phases are here, and it goes through um, four of the phases there. Um, they need to know that the cycle um, takes about 28 days. So let's say I had a full moon on, let's say this was um, day 
um, 13, oh no, let's do 12. When would the next full moon be? Um, it's 28 days, we say, we just kind of round up and say it's about 30. So if I say it's about 30, then I'm going to add 30 to that. So the next full moon would be on day 42. Whatever you're starting with, whatever phase it is, you add about 30 days, and then that's when you can expect the, that same phase to show up again. All right, over here, animals in the ecosystem. So an ecosystem consists of all of the living and non-living parts in a place um, where organisms are interacting and um, everything lives in an ecosystem. So things can get affected in um, different disasters and humans and um, things that we do can cause disruptions in ecosystems. So for example, um, you know, a highway could take away a habitat and that's gonna affect it. Um, lots of different, you know, a tornado comes through, flood, things like that can um, change it. And then living things and interact with non-living things. So um, we talked a lot about interactions and how, um, you know, thinking about whether something is interacting with something that's living versus non-living. So um, like a, um, a lion taking care of her cub, that would be an interaction between living and living. Um, but a lion running on the grass, that would be living and an interaction with something non-living. And so that part there with the interactions. The animals, um, the parts where the animals live in an area is called their habitat, and habitats um, make up the ecosystem. A group of ecosystems in an area with the same climate and organisms is called a biome. And so you have things like deserts, tropical rainforests. Um, we talked about grasslands. We talked about, let's see, oh, it goes through here. So it has each one broken down. And so you, they can read over those. What makes, um, what makes each of those unique? And then here, this big time inherited traits. So these are things that you're getting passed down from your parent. And so things like your hair, your eye color, um, if you're a plant, uh, the shape of your leaves, um, the color, things like that are passed from parent to offspring. And then learned are things that you have to learn by interacting with your environment. And so these, um, you have to observe other organisms. So if I, like I said, talk, talking about the dog, if I tell the dog to sit, that's not something that it was just born knowing how to do. It had to learn that. And then, all right, life science animals. All right, talking about the structures. Um, so here it's giving some examples of some adaptations, fur, feathers, claws, um, beaks on an animal, webbed feet. So looking at an animal and looking at their structural um, uh, adaptations and thinking about what does that help? So those claws or the shape, like on here, how all of these birds have different types of beaks why do birds have different types of beaks of all birds? What makes, you know, why would they be different? And what's the purpose of that? So thinking about how that um, helps them to survive. Then let's see. There's some more examples of some adaptations. All right, weather. Um, big thing here is the difference between weather and climate. Uh, weather, if I open the door and it's snowing, the weather is snowing. That mean, that doesn't mean the climate is snowy. Um, climate is looking at an at, like the average over a long period of time. So like um, I gave the example today in class, um, you know, we have days where it snowed and that's, you know, kind of random and, and not, you know, not our norm. Normally, Texas is very hot and humid and um, dry. 
but there are occasions where, you know, it could flood or there's occasions where it might be snowing or it might be really windy or um, it's, you know, it's, we've got hail. So weather is um, just the day to day. I open the door and, and weather can even change from, you know, morning to afternoon to evening. It's just, I open the door. What is it? That's, that's weather. So, and then climate is that average over a long period of time. So this gives the example of using a photo album. The photo album, the whole album would be the climate versus weather would just be one picture, like one snapshot. And then, here, um, like this image here, showing that near the water, um, that water's evaporating and um, forming clouds. And so the wind will blow it over, um, blow it over to the land. And so it'll rain there. Here's some more uh, characteristics of the earth and moon. So more things that they have uh, similar and different. And then the sun is providing us with heat and light. Without it, we would not have the water cycle. Um, we would not have plant growth, wind, and weather. And the sun is made up of very hot gases. Our solar system is part of the Milky Way galaxy. The sun is at the center. All right, water cycle. So water cycle um, is a cycle. It's a renewable resources because a renewable resource because it is constantly um, and continuously replenishing itself. And so things that are remember we said things that are non-renewable are taking a very long time, like millions of years to replace. This is a continuous thing. So we say that it's renewable. And again, we would not have it without the sun because the, um, the sun is heating the water, causing that evaporation. And so the kids need to know what each of these means. And then they also need to know these where, like how it's evaporation, it's taking um, the liquid and turning it into a gas. Um, condensation is taking that gas and turning it back into a liquid. So each of these, they need to know how to label um, they need to label each of the parts and what's happening. And then here, food chain and food web, lots of vocab. Um, decomposers, predator, prey, producers, consumer, herbivore, carnivore, omnivore, food chain, food web. Need to know all that. Then animal life cycles. Um, some organisms like a butterfly, um, our beetles that we have in class, um, they go through a um, they go through metamorphosis, and um, this is showing some examples here. Then. So this is just breaking down the two different types. We didn't talk about this, but um, there's complete and incomplete. And so if you notice on these, um, the baby doesn't look like the adult. So for example, if I had a puppy, um, my puppy would look very similar to what it's going to look as an adult. Same thing with a baby. A baby looks like its parents. Um, it's just going to get bigger, um, but it resembles. Our beetles, they started off, here's the beetle um, right here. Um, if you look at the eggs or even um, the larva, it doesn't look any, it doesn't resemble. It has to go through that change. All right, so that's metamorphosis. Um, 
this here carbon dioxide and oxygen cycle um, we you can cross that let me see make sure there's nothing in here that we need yeah we don't need that so you can cross that out all right sand and soil all right this um this we talked a lot about in fourth grade there's their fifth grade star covers things from third fourth and fifth and so this was a really big um, topic in fourth grade and so talking about um, soil um, soil is weathered down rock that contains minerals and um, air, water, um, decayed uh, either plants or animals um, gets broken down and becomes part of the soil. Um, Topsoil, um, what would be on the top is the most, um, has that most nutrients because if you think about it, if an animal or a plant dies, um, that's, you know, it breaks down and becomes part of that top part. And so that's where you have a lot of the nutrients. And then um, topsoil, when things get eroded, that topsoil is the first because that's um, that's the one that's closest to the wind or the water um, or ice. Then uh, we talked about in fourth grade the different um, the different types. So here it talks about clay and sand. Um, clay is um, a lot of plants don't do well growing in clay because the particle size um, is really small and so water will get trapped and it'll retain a lot of water and so if you look here um, they're putting the water in through and it's not passing notice it has the least amount of water to come out because it retains a lot of the water. So clay is holding on to it because those particle sizes are so small versus gravel. Gravel has the most water that drained out because gravel has big gaps and um, it's a very large, it's the largest particle size, um, really, really big pieces um, that you can see with your naked eye versus clay you would have to get a microscope to see each little individual part so the gravel um, the water just goes right through there's nothing holding it so clay doesn't do very well uh, do very well because it'll drown it'll pretty much drown and rot the root because those uh, roots are just sitting in that water and um, you want a good soil that will have the water be able to drain all the way um, not all the way you want it to get what it needs and the rest that's extra to drain out. Um, sand um, is another big particle. So you can see it's it's got more water than clay. Um, sand is not good because you want some of the water to retain because um, you want the roots to be able to get that and have access to that water, but you don't want too much. So sand is letting it pass through and the plants can't absorb that water and so they're going to dry out then here all right most beaches are formed by deposits of sediment so as the water is bringing in those um, sediment it's getting dropped off or deposited that's your deposition and then um, beaches can change their shape due to erosion um, during storms or just because if a wave is coming up and hitting, you know, like let's say the side of a cliff or a beach, um, that's slowly breaking it down. And then like this is saying, ocean water can weather away rock found on land and form the sand that covers the beaches. And then here, going back to sedimentary rock, um, this like i was saying can be used to tell um, a story about what things um, look like a long time ago so you can look at the different layers and you can look at fossils that are found in there and um, those fossils will tell you you know what's older what's newer um, you know if you find if you find a fossil in this bottom layer but you don't find it anywhere else then you know it's probably it became extinct here and now it's no longer um, around anymore so you can look at that and by knowing um, knowing that you can 
learn quite a bit about where that organism lived. Like if you see a bunch of um, you know, fish, and if you see a bunch of um, things like shells and things like that, those kind of fossils, then that you know tells you that that was underwater versus um, you know something that doesn't maybe a mammal on land. All right. I said I was going to break this up, but I'm just going to keep going. We've got a few more. All right. Forces of change. So vocab here. We know we need to know about glaciers, volcanoes, earthquakes, caves, beaches, um, all of these landforms. Um, they need to know about how the landforms were formed and um, using vocab like uh, weathering, erosion, and deposition. I'm going to add on here, and this may pop up later, um, deltas. Canyon. Um, mountains. So knowing how um, those are formed. And then here getting into natural resources. So natural resources are things, um, resources, things that we use that are found in na uh, nature. So like we said earlier, things can be renewable. Um, we can use them over and over again because they are easily replaced and can be, um, can be replenished in our lifetime. So if we, um, if we eat a burger, and we have killed a cow, then, um, you know, a new, within my lifetime, I, I could have um, a, a baby cow that would be raised to, you know, have, have more beef. Um, so that's a resource that we use that can be replenished over and over again. Versus non-renewable, again, non rhymes with con, non-con, and um, con, C-O-N, coal, oil, natural gas, those again take a very long time, millions of years. And uh, when we use them up, um, we're not going to have them. And we're using them up faster than we can replace them. Uh, minerals are also non-renewable, fossil fuels. Um, all right, talking about alternative things, wind, solar energy, geothermal. Uh, we talked about those. So finding alternative um, energy for when we, um, since we cannot rely on non-renewable resources forever. All right, then over here, matter and its properties. So all things are made up of matter. Matter makes up everything. The amount of matter in an object is its mass. Talking about weight and physical properties. Uh, we had quite a few that we talked about. So mass, magnetism, physical state, density, solubility, the ability to conduct or insulate. So a lot of that is um, knowing that um, knowing that vocab, when I talk about density, density, talking about sinking and floating, solubility, um, does it dissolve, um, talking about conductors, insulators, I need to know um, what each of those words mean. And then here, um, some density examples, if something floats and is at the top of the water, it's less dense than the water. If it sinks, it's greater than the water. Then um, talking about solubility, if something is dissolving, and so things like sugar and salt are soluble in water, sand would not. So if I mix sand and water, it's never going to dissolve. It's always going to be a separate. It's always going to be separate. Versus sugar and salt would dissolve in the water and look like one substance. So um, those are soluble. All right, physical science, states of matter. All right, matter, three states, solid, liquid, gas. You need to know these about solid liquids and gases, um, about how they keep their shape, about 
the volume and you need to know how they change from one thing one to another so how do i what do i need to do to make a solid into a liquid what do i need to do to make a liquid into a gas how do i go from one to the next um, so heating and cooling can change those so knowing uh, what's what and then here so it's giving some examples of those um, you need to know what they look like so when you see things all lined up um, and kind of holding their shape that's a solid liquid is closely packed together but um, you'll see gaps like they're not going to be all lined up straight like in the solid and then the particles and gas are all over the place and then these all right energy all right so we've got mechanical light thermal electrical and sound um, knowing what they are and then also knowing um, like if I look at a stove uh, being able to identify what types of energy um, are being used. And so it goes into examples. Then here, um, electric current is a, um, if you look here, you've got this pathway from your battery. So um, knowing when you're looking at the circuits, um, you'll have to find the pathway so tracing the pathway so we've, told, we've showed the kids how to draw um, the arrows and see to see whether or not we make a complete path and so if i'm leaving the battery and i'm going and touching um, this paper clip let's say it's a metal paper clip um, that would be a conductor and so the electrons would continue to pass through there so it would light up the light bulb, the wires connected to both, um, both the ends, those metal parts on the light. And then if it makes a complete path back to my battery, then I know I've got that complete pathway. And so the light would um, light up um, versus let's say I didn't have a paper clip. Let's say I used a rubber eraser or a piece of wood or cotton or something like that, that would be an insulator then um, that would not make my light turn on and so that was um, that was more of in fourth grade and then fifth grade um, we just kind of added more like we got into parallel circuits so now you've got um, different pathways going all over the place and um, just being able to you know turn on and off switches and when we turn this on what's the effect of it or when we turn this switch off uh what happens to you know are, are some of the light bulbs going to light and others are not and so being able to um they need to be able to trace those all right here all right going back to landforms and we know things like wind water and ice can change those um, weathering erosion and deposition very big need to know the definitions of those um, oh there's those things that i said oh sand dunes i forgot um, knowing how those are um, created how they change um, we have a song weathering breaks it erosion takes it and when the motion stops deposition drops so knowing that weathering is that breaking down, erosion is um, you're taking those broken down pieces of sediment and it's moving to a new place. And then um, deposition is once, let's say, um, let's say water is moving something and it finally stops, it comes to a halt. Uh, that new place that it's been deposited or left is um, that process called deposition. Then here, all right, mixtures and solutions. Um, mixture is, it's two or more things mixed together and you are able to separate them. So some questions will ask you what kind of things you need um, to use to separate them. So 
there's things like this, there's an example, and then solutions. Um, if you've got something mixed in with water, um, like let's say you have salt water, you can evaporate that solution and uh, the water will evaporate and then you'll just be left with, let's say you did salt, um, you'll be left with the salt. Or if you did sugar, you'd be left with the sugar. And then um, solutions are a special type of mixture that um, it's still two or more things mixed together, but one is dissolving in the other. And so it looks like just one substance. Uh, density, talking about what's going to sink, what's going to float. And so if you look here, um, the things that are on top, like the oil, we can say is less dense than the corn syrup. Corn syrup is more dense than the red dye water. So coming up with statements like that. All right, physical science force. All right, force, um, talking about pushes and pulls, friction, gravity, magnetism. Um, with uh, pushes and pulls, um, knowing which direction is what, friction, Oh, excuse me. Knowing knowing those vocabulary um, will help you out there. And then here, going back to conductors and insulators, knowing the vocab, examples, um, conductors, metal, copper, aluminum, gold, silver, uh, water, uh, wires in the circuit, pots that are made out of metal, um, examples of conductors versus insulators, um, glass, plastic, rubber, air, wood, um, things that um, your conductors are going to allow those um, electrons to pass right through. So like in our circuit, when we had that paper clip, it made the light bulb come on versus um, an insulator. If I would have put that rubber eraser um, a rubber eraser is a insulator, and so that would um, that would not let it to flow through easily. And so um, knowing that we have um, protections, like when I'm when I'm holding the wire, there's a plastic coating around it, and that's to protect me. Um, and then let's see here, light energy. You need to know the difference between um, refraction and reflection. You need to know that light travels in straight lines and refracted means um, like here where it looks like the pencil is broken or bent and then reflected um, like when you think about when you look at your reflection it's bounced um, the light is bounced back and so it goes through some examples there. And that is it. So um, this was a little bit longer than I thought it was going to be, but that's okay. So you can watch this video um, in sections or all together or go over the areas that you just need. Um, whatever you need, please let me know if you have any questions. And have fun studying.